Hello, my name is Dr. David Rutstein. I'm delighted to uh, be here to talk about the wonderful new television show, Don't Diss My Ability. You know, that show um, speaks very credibly to the real life situations that face uh, people with disabilities and um, uh, really tries to encourage the audience to understand what disabilities are about and how people can lead normal and productive and vibrant lives. As a public health expert, you know, I used to be the Deputy Surgeon General of the United States. Uh, I understand the value of ensuring people remain healthy and vital uh, to um, what they do and the families they serve and the communities in which they live. Don't Diss My Ability uh, speaks very directly to this, and I'm delighted that this television show uh, is gaining in popularity, having a wider and wider audience, and uh, is helping people throughout the seacoast and perhaps the nation to um, better understand what it means to live with disabilities. Don't Diss My Ability is made possible through the generous support of Full Circle Community Thrift Store, helping individuals or families living with cancer. Our goal is to help alleviate the stresses of daily financial obligations during this time by providing financial assistance to those in need. Full Circle Community Thrift Store. Living Innovations, providing support for people with developmental disabilities to have a good life at home and in the community. Services include Community Connections, which facilitates employment, skill development and community integration to maximize each individual's well-being and independence. For more information or to learn about job opportunities for compassionate people wishing to do meaningful work, visit livinginnovations.com. Natural Care Wellness Center has been serving the New Hampshire and Maine Seacoast for 18 years. Our goal is to encourage a healthy lifestyle through education, wellness choices, and hands-on healing. Natural Care Wellness Center offering gentle force chiropractic, family and child wellness, chiropractic acupuncture, holistic nutrition, nutrition response testing, a decompression table, therapeutic exercise, whole food supplements, neuroemotional techniques, and massage therapy. And by One Sky Community Services. For over 30 years, One Sky has taken great pride in overcaring for those with developmental disabilities and acquired brain disorders. Dedicated to every individual it serves, giving them full comprehensive support and services essential to fulfilling the personal and professional potential and becoming a successful member of their community. Serving 24 Seacoast communities, call 603-436-6111 for further information. And by TMS Architects. New England Design Redefined. Sometimes we decide who people are before we even get to know them, based on maybe what they look like, how they talk, what kind of clothes they're wearing, what kind of music they like, whatever. We decide who they are before we ever get to know who they really are inside. And it happens to us too. Sometimes people decide who we are before they know us. I think all we really want is just for, for people to see us for who we really are. See me beautiful, look for the best in me, it's what I really am and all I want to be. It may take some time, it may be hard to find, but see me beautiful. See me beautiful each and every day, could you take a chance? to find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
See me beautiful, look for the best in me. It's what I really am and all I want to be. It may take some time, it may be hard to find. But see me beautiful, see me beautiful each and every day. Could you take a chance? you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful. Good afternoon, we're back. I'm Ronnie Tomanio. This is Don't Dish My Ability. And as always, uh, joined by some wonderful people, some of my favorite people in the world. Uh, and then there's you, Lee. No. <laughs> I'm sorry where that came from. Strike that. Can you crank, get that out of the film? <laughs> uh, good afternoon. I'm Lee Harvey. Okay. And, and I'm Pamela Sollenberger. And I don't want to neglect John Lovering. Sometimes he's here, sometimes he's behind a camera. He's behind a camera today. John's over there. Just have to take my word for it. And our guest today uh, is Hannah Burke. And uh, Hannah Burke is someone I've, sometimes I haven't even met the person. I mean, this is a wonderful show or a crazy show. Sometimes people come out and we never even met them before and we have to get to know them, but we have a little advantage. I've, I met uh, Hannah, I don't know, maybe five, six weeks ago. Yeah, we have a mutual friend. And uh, we got to talking and you know, I, I, I maybe this is a character flaw or something, but um, just thinking in terms of, boy, that person over there, they make a good guest on this show. You know, I just look at people differently. <laughs> Pamela, I didn't even introduce you. We talk about you. Oh, no, I, I did. Did you? I did I mean, introduce that, myself. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> you say you're a grief counselor? You're a that I am. Yeah, yes. she's a yes. professional grief counselor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so... I, I I met Hannah and I said, wow, this is a... And then to top it off, it would make it a really a cinch that she should want to be on the show. And we'll talk about her background pretty soon is that uh, she wants to have a show of her own and she should have a show of her own. This is Hannah, Hannah Burke. So welcome, Hannah Burke. Thank welcome. you very much. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. you inviting me here to kind mm -hmm. of get my feet wet. And yeah. <laughs> figure all this out. We're in the process of um, developing um, a television uh, show that is focusing on co-occurring disorders and how, um, how that really, really uh, flows throughout the whole fabric of our society. Can you define co-occurring disorders? Co-occurring disorders um, specifically are people struggling with mental health issues and addiction. Mm -hmm. um, often one can have a mental health issue um, without addiction, but it's, it's rare that addiction comes without, without having, having it tied in with mental health. Mm. Yeah. Is it the uh, cart before the horse or the horse before the cart? Is it uh, someone Sometimes has... The chicken or the egg. Right? Chicken or the <laughs> egg, I'll go for that too, but is it the case where one leads to addiction or addiction then just kind of like messes with your head and you have a mental disorder? I think that's rare in my opinion. Yeah, I, think that, I think that addiction yeah. comes out of, of yeah. trauma, deep yeah. anguish, yeah. demons that yeah. develop within someone mm -hmm. for any number of, of reasons. Um, so, yeah, I think... I think um, Addiction, addiction is really a characteristic of other things. And I think part of the problem is we look at addiction as a problem unto itself. It, it, they don't, we don't look at the, the whole story. Okay. And I, we don't, I know this is such a painful subject and we, we're just going to establish the credibility of, of, of you as a host of such a show that deals that it's going to 
that addiction is part of in your own family situation. So let's talk about that. And in, unfortunately, so many family situations, it's still amazing to me um, how many people I meet that have been touched by it. Just found that out about Pamela, in fact. So it's, it's everywhere. It's pervasive mm -hmm. throughout the society. Um, in my particular situation, I've been on the front lines for almost 11 years um, in terms of dealing with, with both mental health and addiction with our uh, almost 25-year-old son. Um, and I have worked as his advocate, <laughs> um, moved mountains, touched on every aspect of the systems that do not work. Can you take it back to when he was 14? Did you see any of this coming? Looking back, did you see, can you, through that lens, can you see, well, if, if we had done this, or if this hadn't happened to him? I know there's, a, there's an event, yes. like a P, an event that you PTSD, might want to PTSD, so. yes. Okay. Um, for sure. Um, well, when Christopher was 14, we were driving back from sailing. We were all in the car. We have a, a daughter who's um, 21 as well. Well, actually 22 tomorrow. Um, and Christopher was 14, Julia 11, and um, there was a fire on the side of the road. And it was a young man we'd actually seen earlier in the day at the gas station. And he had doused himself in gasoline and was a flame. And it took us over a year to really figure out what was going on with Christopher, but he completely shut down. Yeah. And he's the, he, there is, it seems, oftentimes a profile that's more sensitive to this. Ask. Yes. How sensitive ADHD is ADHD, yeah. uh, you know, brain. Mm -hmm. um, very, very bright. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the firstborn of two firstborns. <laughs> um, a Gemini. Oh, he's a, you know, ADHD for attention deficit disorder, okay. uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, I don't really believe it's a disorder. I think you mm. need a different mm -hmm. different bag of tools. It's mm -hmm. a very engaged, very lively brain. Mm -hmm. um, a lot great, of positives too. A lot of positives. Mm -hmm. The greatest um, inventors oh, and yeah. creators on this earth um, had have an AD brain, yeah. ADD brain. Yeah, I think um, Einstein did. Absolutely. So it balances out yeah. society. You know, we tried to get that guy for a, a guest, and he doesn't return the call. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Bill, Bill, you're in the booth. You have a little bit more clout than we do. Work, work on that. I'm sorry. So, I, that's my problem. <laughs> that's well, okay. It makes problem. this show interesting, okay. Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> Levity is important, okay. too, right? <laughs> So anyway, it's been a very, very long journey um, yes, yeah. that we thought had crescendoed wow. with heroin, um, mm -hmm. but it still goes on. He's mm -hmm. been clean for um, for close to two years now, mm -hmm. but there are there are still many, many struggles. Was there a beginning of... substance, or was it right from right to heroin? Did it, was there anything in the interlude, or can you? I don't really know. I mean, I, I'm sure there were a lot of things because okay. he was he was um, he was struggling with. I think he was really struggling with the fact that his soul had shut down, um, and we 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 sought out all kinds of help, and it was actually a homeopath who had who gave him um, a remedy that reignited his emotional. Really? Yeah. So you're saying his, his emotions shut down. Yeah. Um, and Pamela, you get into this too. I mean, you, you see people with addictions too. Mm -hmm. And I, I know you have a personal connection. But is, is the emotion shut down and then you turn to addiction? Or is it addiction and then your emotions shut down? Can well, a lot you... of times what they do is take that addiction so they can escape particularly if there's trauma involved. Oh, absolutely. You know. Christopher said to me yeah. at one point, mm -hmm. Mom, the only reason I took all those drugs yeah. was to stop the pain. That's right. So yeah, there's a yeah. tremendous, and he's, there's still a tremendous amount of pain because now, now almost 11 years later, there's this whole developmental period of time exactly. that's been stunted mm -hmm. and perverted, right. and he's been let down over and over again mm -hmm. and assaulted by all of the systems over and over again. Um, 
it's very tragic it in a lot of ways. Um, so we're still looking mm -hmm. to support him, love him unconditionally, mm -hmm. in the hope that he can find his way because yeah. he has so much to give. And yeah. I think so many of these people do, especially who, who had such difficult journeys. Mm -hmm. When you said shut down, are, he didn't are care you, about anything. But are you, are you, fill us, fill us in and the wider world about, so when someone becomes an addict, do they kind of like chronologically stay there? I mean, do you see elements of him still being 14? Or, I mean, how does, what does addiction do to your natural I don't think it's the addiction. Yeah. It's, the, it's the trauma. It's the trauma. The trauma actually mm -hmm. changes the pathways in yeah. your brain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess the yeah. trauma is yeah. what I was interested yeah. in. Because yeah. when the I look back at what my own family went through after my stroke and then my wife's breast cancer and having to move and my daughter. I mean, everybody, all three of us had went through traumas in different ways. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I know my daughter still struggles with it. My ex-wife struggles somewhat with it, and I struggle with it. You know, you get used to a person who you are and you're not that person anymore. You. How do you get used to the new person? You know? exactly. And exactly. I don't know any easy way through all that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't. I look at it through my own lens, and I can't speak for my wife or my daughter what they went through. You know, okay. they'd have to mm -hmm. do that through their own lens. So, I mean, it. It. I mean, the day it struck me was my wife, who's a mental health counselor, realized our daughter was struggling in a major way with probably depression and anger, you know, because we had to move after my stroke and she wound up at a school that she didn't want to be at. She didn't have any friends there. She didn't care about the school, you know. She liked the class, liked the teacher. She worked hard. If she didn't like either of those, she kind of blew it off. And we sat down with her and we said, we're worried about you. And she said, no, I'm happy. This I remember very distinctly while tears are running down both her cheeks. And as a parent, you go, this can't be good, you know. And I was kind of in la-la land myself. So I'm trying to look at this through kind of a fuzzy focus sure. of my own self at that point. And, you know, what do I do to help her, you know, at that it was frustrating. You know, the trauma, I mean, do you see people with trauma? I do. Absolutely. What works? How do you help them? Well, in so many ways, um, just like Anne was saying, I mean, you really have to put some tools in your toolbox because people are more resilient than you think they are. So what are those tools? Whatever will, you know, be tailored to that person, you know, whatever it is some type of self-care, whether it be meditation, relaxation, yoga, you know, whatever is important to them, you know. What did you use, Hannah? Oh, did you use tools? To... For myself personally? Yeah. Because this, I mean, this is, talk about trauma. You were in that car. You not yeah. only saw that, but you've seen what happened to your son. Yeah. What about you? How did you take that, care That of original yourself? trauma is only meaningful in that that it's almost taken our son's life many times, I believe. Um, I think he would have, you know, maybe life would have been challenging, but nothing like what it's been. Mm -hmm. um, for me, in terms of resilience, I think it's um, the relationship that I have with my husband and our deep love and commitment as parents and as friends and mm -hmm. as lovers and, and our, and, 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 I, and we have a daughter who's magnificent, you know, and somehow mm -hmm. she survived this and survived mm -hmm. very successfully mm -hmm. and learned from it and grows from it. Um, I think it's hanging on, it's hanging on to hope, um, which has waned. Mm -hmm. um, well, when you look inside, do you see any 
evidence of trauma from what your son has gone through all these years? How is that? In myself again? Yes. Oh, we're deeply traumatized. Mm -hmm. Deeply. Yeah, absolutely. I see that. I see how easily I can be triggered. Mm -hmm. And oh, how does wow. that affect the family? Or do you have other children and you have a husband? How does that work out? How do you deal with that so it doesn't cause greater harm other than what, mm -hmm. getting hurt? Get, well, getting sometimes hurt. there are just some rough moments. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are things that I personally do. I am, um, you know, I... Your tools. So let's yeah, about your my tools. tools um, being outside, mm -hmm. I'm a power walker, mm -hmm. um, practicing yoga, remembering to breathe. I'm a big foodie, so if I can get in the kitchen mm -hmm. um, and start creating <laughs> a beautiful meal, um, it's very important because it's a space mm -hmm. that I feel I have control. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another piece that's so important. Uh, uh, and, and being yeah. a doer, I am yeah. an advocate by nature, I yeah. found out. <laughs> and, and I am always looking for a solution and who do I call uh -huh. and what, what, what can I shift, what opportunity can I open up. Um, so I, I hope you heal a lot of people with this show that you're going to do, but I think you're also objective. going to do a lot of healing for yourself and your family. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, yes, I recognize that already. Lee, I cut you off. Now, now I'm familiar with a therapy, I think it's called EMDR, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, yeah. desensitization mm -hmm. response, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. is what that stands for, yeah. which is for trauma, yes. as best I understand yeah. it. And that, that, is, that plays a role in helping to rewire your but exactly. Your brain. Now, I think they've moved on past just the eyes from what I've heard recently, but they've realized it doesn't have to be with just the eyes. So I'm really getting excited about your show because you're, it's, it's more than just your personal story. You've had to develop tools for, for, for you to survive. Because if you hadn't developed tools, it's unlikely you would be We'd be sitting here today, and you talking about going out to help other people with the show. Absolutely, you would be trying to just scratch through the day and stay on your feet that day. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. So and there's where your credibility comes from. Yeah. You know, you're just not somebody who has an intellectual. Yeah. You read a book one day, and you said, "I think I can do a show like this." No, mm -hmm. no, no, not you, at all. You've got credibility to no. do a show no. like this. Yeah. I've had. Yeah. Did you read a book, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> that was about three years ago, I think. It was a wonderful experience. Well, the other day I had, uh, actually, Perry Blast was going to be the producer of the show, and myself had uh, brunch with a gentleman who's been in, he was, in, he's been in recovery for 30 years or 35 years or something, but he um, has worked within the field mm -hmm. for over 30 years mm -hmm. in every aspect. And I said to him, <laughs> I finally met someone, Barry. Who knows more than I do? Oh, well, that's very humble of you. We're big on humility. Well, when you're a mother with a passion, oh, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. and you want to save your kid, that's there right. is yeah, nothing you know, that's going to get in your way. You can lift up that car that's, that's and get right. your you child up. Exactly. Get that child but up. with this show, which comes out of a, um, a, a gathering, um, the title. I love the title. It's called Hope and Healing. Yeah, it resonated with me too before we even went. Mm. Um, and it's a group that started at the Baha'i Center for Learning in Elliott, um, who are who are actually supporting uh, moving forward with this television show. Um, they their objective is to reach out, become more connected mm -hmm. with the Seacoast community, and wanted to identify issues and of course mental health addiction. Um, are among the top mm -hmm. issues, um, as well as discrimination, which also mm -hmm. feeds into that yes. in a huge way. So oh, they're yes. also looking at discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, so this group was started as a support type of group. And when we went, there were very few people there. And I said, what's going on? Where are you marketing this? Why, why is nobody it's here? Was such a huge uh, need? As I understand it, I think it's pretty new. Right? I think it's been going on for a year a or so. Year? Okay. Yeah, we, okay. it's relatively new to us. It took us a while to finally attend. What, um, what day of the week is that? I think I worked that. Is it a Friday? It's now switched. It, uh, we actually have a gathering this Friday, oh. Open Healing at the Baha'i Center on Main Street, Route 103, Green Acre. Yeah, Green Acre. Yeah. Um, and 
uh, each gathering will be different, have a different focus, and we're hoping that our objective is to help people with resilience building tools, support, bring community together, be connected. Connection is so important. Okay. You feel so isolated when you're struggling and is particularly in crisis. So my show in particular, the objective for me... I'm, I'm going to yeah. just warn you. Yes. Uh, we're going to about one minute. We're going to take our break, our halfway break. We're going to see a segment. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to okay. you can keep going until he cuts us off. But I don't want you to start something and then have to... Okay. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to so, say uh, the objective... What time? Let's do the... Let's get the, yes. the specifics. It's... It's going to be Friday, it's what, how much, every week, every month? Or? Well, Friday is the Hope and Healing Gathering. Okay. The television okay. show will probably start production sometime in later June. But the meeting's at Green Acre? Which... At 7 o'clock, 7 um, to 9 o'clock. Every, is it? Once a month. Once a month, mm, and yes. there's one, okay. when is the next one? This Friday, this Friday. on the 20th. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay. So I'd say Google Green Acre and you're going gonna, you're gonna to see a lot of uh, information mm -hmm. about what's going on there. All right, I think we are ready for uh, a segment about Dr. David Rusty. My name is David Rutstein. I'm a family physician and public health expert. Uh, my career has consisted of working mostly in the U.S. federal government, um, both as a primary care clinician and then as a public health administrator. I ultimately retired from government as the Deputy Surgeon General of the United States and then worked in the private sector before starting a foundation called Soul Health. I'm here today to speak to you uh, about a very important subject, uh, which is low back pain. Low back pain is one of the most common reasons that adults visit healthcare providers in the United States. Aside from the often intense suffering it causes, it is associated with lost wages, decreased work productivity, and high healthcare costs. While Low back pain that compresses nerves can be quite serious. Thankfully, the vast majority of low back pain does not involve compression of nerves. Thus, while there is significant pain in the lower back, often unpredictable, sharp, and spasmodic in nature, there are no sharp or burning pains that shoot down the leg. What works best to relieve this most common form of low back pain? Well, after an analysis of all the currently available evidence, the American College of Physicians released some helpful low back pain guidelines. The good news is that most cases of low back pain gradually improve regardless of treatment. Therefore, patients can avoid potentially harmful, costly treatments and tests. Most patients improve from superficial heat, massage, acupuncture, or spinal manipulation. When such therapies are insufficient, short courses of anti-inflammatory medicine or muscle relaxants can provide some relief. An interesting note is that bed rest seems to delay improvement. So it is important to remain as active as possible. Also, acetaminophen, Tylenol, is not helpful in low back pain. For low back pain that has been present for more than 12 weeks, non-drug therapies have also been effective. These include exercise, rehabilitation, acupuncture, mindfulness-based stress reduction, Tai Chi, yoga, progressive relaxation, biofeedback, laser therapy, operant and cognitive behavioral therapies, and spinal manipulation. For patients that do not benefit 
from such therapies. There are a variety of medicines that your physician can prescribe to help improve both pain and function. But most patients with chronic low back pain do not require strong pain medicines. While no therapy is clearly better than any other, new evidence supports acupuncture in acute low back pain and mindfulness-based stress reduction and Tai Chi in chronic back pain. So, the next time you need relief from low back pain, consider one or more non-drug therapies. You and your physician can work together to find a therapy that is right for you. We're back, and uh, just so you know, I'm, I haven't lost it completely. If you hear me talking and there's no one there, it's, um, we have these new earpieces. I have a new earpiece now. I think I, can I take this home? This is wonderful. I think I'd get along better with my wife if I could just communicate with earpieces. No, not you. I mean, she could have one too, Bill. She could be out in the yard somewhere, say, did you do the dishes? And I could say, yeah, I did them, and she would know. Yeah, you, yeah. Well, we've got a serious topic here, people. <laughs> we do have a serious topic. We really do. Mm -hmm. So let's talk. We're going to talk more about the show and how you envision the show. And are you going to have a guest host? And I mean, well, that's an interesting thing. You can have a guest host every time, or you can have guests every time, or a permanent host. How do you see the show going? Well, as I said, my producer took off to Japan, Japan. for two weeks. <laughs> so we're in a little bit of a holding pattern here. When's he coming back, by the way? Very end of the month. Yeah. Very end of the month. Well, yeah. it's, that's still a couple of weeks to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just left, so. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think he'll come back dressed any differently or, you know, he's got to be him Who or... Who knows with Perry? Yeah. You Who knows know. with Perry? Yeah. <laughs> Come off the plane in a yeah, kimono and right, right, bow to everybody, bow to everybody. In the little sandals. Yes, yes. <laughs> Suddenly his eyesight will be very poor. <laughs> I gotta blame it on diet. Too much rice. Too much rice. So. <laughs> so, so anyway. Yeah. Okay. This is serious. <laughs> Laughter is good. It's a good but resilience laugh. tool. Yes, yeah. it is. That's a wonderful word, isn't it? Yes. Resilience. Well, mm -hmm. I've d I had never really used the word until recently, as our first gathering was based on resilience building tools. It was mm -hmm. in the form of a workshop. And um, I decided resilience is my word of the year. Yeah. Just to live in this world right now, you have to be resilient. You do. Let's, seriously. let's go back to resilience and how it differs from what people think it means, but getting. Go through the breath, you know, the nuts and bolts of the show, how you see it, or have you, how you, have you thought it through? Are you going to have, is it just going to be you, or are you going to have a permanent guest host, or what who do you want as guests? Because somebody out there, or we could spread the word about absolutely. that we'd very open be on this that. panel, and we mm -hmm. have a, in between us, we know a lot of people who might mm -hmm. be wanting to come yeah, as guests. Yeah, very, very open to that as, as things are, are unfolding and developing. Um, we're we're still working on the name. I think it's going to be. It is an offshoot of the Hope and Healing Gathering, and I, I love I love what that connotates. I mean, there is no mm -hmm. hope healing without hope, mm -hmm. as we all know. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm I'm going to be the the ho the host, the ex exclusive host. But um, we're looking to have two or three guests each time from all aspects of this. Um, it's not a show. That, we, that I envision with, you know, you're sitting with the professionals. Mm -hmm. Some, we want people who really are connected to this, who really mm -hmm. know what this is, mm -hmm. who lived Going it. Going through it themselves, yeah. like, like what you're going through in your family. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those in recovery, those who worked in the field, um, but in a, in a real genuine way, that they come mm -hmm. at it from a very genuine standpoint. Um, for example, um, I think this is a good example in two ways. One, how the interweaving of co-occurring disorders mm -hmm. in our 
whole society and also how everyone's been touched by it and um, and how you never know who you're going to meet. I was in, yeah. in a store the other day and I was chatting with this woman, it's actually a makeup store, <laughs> and so I said, well, you know, this is what I'm looking for because I'm going to be on this, hosting this television show. She said, what is it about? And I told her and she said that her passion was in the area of homelessness and that yeah. she wants to start a homeless shelter and she was a big talker and she went on and on and on about um, how she wants it to be a home that works in a communal way that mm -hmm. people are all participants in the, the growing of food and the cooking of food of the cleaning of taking care of animals she yeah. first started saying why don't homeless shelters have dogs why can't you have animals in there Mm -hmm. um, and so we started talking about the human element of all of this. Mm -hmm. People are not feeling connected. People are no. feeling alone. People um, are feeling hopeless. And and they're uh, they, with all of that, is a brain that is not feeling uh, any kind of self esteem. Can mm -hmm. I ask you both of you? Does trauma increase your sense of feeling alone? Absolutely, oh, of course. Can you oh, talk yeah. more about that? Oh, yeah. Any of you? Can you explain more of that? Oh my god. I mean, it, it feels like almost visceral, but... Well, it is you, visceral. Think of a soldier coming home from war. Okay. How isolated are they? How lonely are they? How are they going to mingle and socialize? They're not. Okay? They have post-traumatic stress disorder. Many of them have traumatic brain injuries. So they're not able to... They're going to... If they went to a restaurant or a diner or somewhere, they're going to strategically place themselves right where the door is so they can have a quick exit if they hear something because they're still at war. Okay, that's the trauma in them. They, they have illusions. They have hallucinations. They have the nightmares that come in. They're not able to have a sense of identity anymore. It's very, very hard. So think of that. And but they the don't person, have anybody to, but, usually to talk with. No. no. Most of them don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about but it. But Pamela, yeah. don't you think also when yeah. you are yeah. traumatized and, or reignited yes. by your trauma, mm -hmm. um, there's the whole fight, and, fight or but flight light. thing that comes yes. into play. And so and I think because of that, you're in survival mode. Every and, time. And so that brings a sense of there is an yeah. isolation with Exactly. That. Because exactly. the flight doesn't mean that you take off for Colorado. The flight could mean I'm going to go deeper within myself and yep. way away from you Exactly, people. exactly. And because isolate. That's what they have to do because the trauma is so overpowering. It's the fear. It's the horror. It's everything that has played in, in their hand and what's happened to them. So how can they come out and just sit here and you know, have a conversation? They can't. And I think that, that brings it back around to the show and the objectives in my mm -hmm. mind, and that is to instigate change. Mm -hmm. The systems don't work. There really is not help out there that is rational. Yeah. Right. Um, right. And, and also to provide a voice for those who mm -hmm. are struggling, mm -hmm. those who are helping those who are struggling mm -hmm. or witnessing those who are struggling. Mm -hmm. um, when you're, again, when you're in crisis, you feel like you're all alone. Um, so I think uh, to, to have a sense of community, have a sense of, um, of, of hope mm -hmm. and of how can we, what are these tools? Mm -hmm. how, can we, how can we help each other? Mm -hmm. And, exactly. and to also to yeah. speak to the discrimination that exists that is enormous mm -hmm. for those mm -hmm. who have mental health or addiction exactly. or disabilities or have come back from exactly. war or on and on and on. Exactly. We have so much discrimination in this society exactly. still. You want to talk a little bit, like we were talking over at Perry's place about, I mean, I, I, I even hate to ask you this question because this is really the painful part about trying to get care for your son and some of the frustrations there. I mean, I don't want to dig up really horrible wounds because when, I, when you were talking about this, I was just almost feeling your pain and feeling the... I think I blew you away a little bit. No, I no, but, I, but it really is genuinely... Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I've got kids, you've got kids, and you, got, you know, you feel like, well, wow, how would I survive this, you know? Well, Talk I, a little bit about I the frustration. I think the thing is that, 
as if it isn't enough dealing with a child who's in deep, deep pain, mm -hmm. um, and you and you don't know you don't know exactly what you're dealing with. Is it is it yeah. the, is it the drugs? Is it the mental health? Yeah. I mean that 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 mm -hmm. in and of itself is enormous. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you're battling all of the systems, I mean, with Christopher, it started out with the public school system that only was punitive as he withdrew. <laughs> and, and I was talking to them every day, you know, the principal, the guidance counselor. Um, this is early on, right after this very early on, incident. and he was yeah. withdrawing from all of the friends he had gone through school with. He started withdrawing from us. Um, and then battling the healthcare system that certainly didn't look at the whole person then, mm -hmm. um, doesn't do much better now. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we have the judicial system that's always a partner in all of the pain. Mm -hmm. um, their aggression, their lack of understanding, their objective to, um, you know, to just arrest. How can I find some reason to arrest somebody? Um, hugely... Um, not only painful, but contributing factor to Christopher's trauma and to our whole family's trauma has been the how the police department has functioned. Mm -hmm. Even though they say, mm -hmm. we understand there's a mental health issue here, um, it has never played out that way and doesn't to this day. That really scares me in a slightly off point, but I don't think it is because I've heard your story and your dealings with police. I'm not... I, I, this is not my issue, and I, I know this is an awfully tough job of being police today. But, you know, you can't help. You turn on the news and some kid with a cell phone is shot 20 times in his back. And I'm not, and, and deeper thought makes me think this is a time when unbelievably powerful guns of every kind are available to people. Oh my and if you're a policeman, you know that. And so yeah. we're seeing a lot of these over the top reactions. When someone's going to comb their hair and, and, and they think it's an aggressive mood and all the stories you told about your son that's involved in the policeman is really scary. Uh, lots and lots of uh, arrests, never a conviction. Yeah. To the point that it's made us feel unsafe in our own home. Mm. Yeah. And we're talking about Elliot Maine. Oh. Elliot, he, he, I don't think it's a high crime area. No, no, it's worse than that. I, I, I was told in a reliable source that Elliot Maine, which is maybe six, seven minutes from Portsmouth, they were telling me that Maine is the safest state in the, I was at a fair last year, a summer fair or fall fair, and I was right next to the police, sitting right next to the police station, and they were telling me the statistics that Maine is the safest state in the Union, that uh, and in the safest state in Maine is Elliot, and I was sitting right next to the police station. I mean, I just thought of the irony of that. And yeah. still, yeah. you you live in Elliot, and you had some really scary, uh, not not to go down on the police force and stuff, but yeah, it's really scary. Yeah, it's very scary. It's very troubling, and and I think a big part of the problem is that they're not trained. No. No, I mean, years ago, I said, "Why Nami had Nami is a national alliance yes. of um, and they've been on mentally the ill, yeah. yeah, mental illness, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and they have a program, a training program specifically geared towards the police." Yes, they do. And they've refused to take that. They don't know anything about mental health. There's, it's rare. There are some police forces that have, um, that have police officers that have a background in social work. Mm. As I understand it, Almost. so that that can shift things a little bit, but <laughs> not Elliot. <laughs> yeah, you you take all of these things together. It's like putting you know black powder next to gasoline, next to a match, and all of this. You take the society, which is, can be a very dangerous society for everybody, including the police. I'm seeing mm, that aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You you really are going to need a different kind of a society trained to deal. Uh, with mental health issues, and, and they're, not. Yeah. they're not. And the disregard for what the impact is on someone who is struggling. Mm -hmm. I mean, for our son, um, and for us for that matter, there's really no faith in the system. Mm -hmm. um, we feel like we've been 
profoundly let down by it over and over and over again. I could sit here and tell stories for hours. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But this is why I want to do the show. I want to make change. (laughs) I think that I'm, I'm praying that we can create a voice that's loud enough that we can make, we can create awareness mm-hmm. and maybe make change at, I don't know, policy change can, can I, can uh, I, and uh, local change. Can I make a suggestion when you have these open he- healing? Uh, they've been over some of the more social gatherings there, police chief and Elliot and all that. I would invite one of them to your meeting. Uh, I have actually met the head guys, pretty nice. I thought he was nice, but I, if he's nice or not nice, I still think that would be a good first step. Please come. Well, they know Greenacre. They're going to see it as a safe place. And, and Actually, Sergeant these. Lund from the LA okay. Police, who's relatively new and it's sort of, he's supposedly an expert on addiction, oh. um, he, was, uh, he was invited and, and he came to two meetings, maybe, Okay. then dropped off the face of the earth. So. Okay. I guess he wasn't as interested as he said he was. Yeah. No, we w- thought that would be very important um, okay. to include, you know, them in the expansion of community that we're trying okay. to create here. Okay. Because no one should ever have to feel like they're all alone when they're in crisis. No, no. That is one of yeah. the worst feelings yeah. in the world. It, one, speaking for myself. Because it's a very, uh, excuse me, it's a very helpless feeling. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. It, um, I mean, my time in the hospital right after my stroke, I felt like everything that I cared about in the world and everything that supported me had been ripped away from me, really. Mm, I mean, it was probably the worst environment for anybody I can conceive of. You know, I kind of thought I'd almost rather be in prison than in the hospital, to be Mm. frank about it. Figured the food would be better and I'd be better. (laughs) The food would be better. And I was frustrated, you know, I was depressed and struggling mightily, I mean, to get used to the new person that I was. And Any mental health services were provided? Um, no. Right. No, yeah. uh, well, right. And, I mean, the only yeah. person that I met with consistently that I cared about was my wife that would come and visit me during visiting hours each day. And other than that, I was kind of left to my own devices. and In your own head, with your own pain yeah, yeah, and your yeah. own fear. Going, okay, well, nothing is working. They're feeding me through a tube. What kind of life is this, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, it was a dark place, you know, mm-hmm. I guess is all mm-hmm. I can say. If you don't have something that's familiar yeah. and that you care about with you, I mean, what is, kind of life do you have? Well, I think the big pro- what you're speaking about too is that there's no empathy or compassion in the in the systems. No, oh, it was pretty it's, miserable. It, I mean, my I mean, introduction how? to the hospital, I an orderly met met me when I came in by ambulance, and I said, "Don't lay me flat. I can't swallow. You know, I, I'll aspirate and I'm going to choke to death. Please leave me sitting up." And the first thing he did was. Put me flat, you. and I threw up all over him, and I kind of went, well, that. I felt a little bad, but... <laughs> Not too down, bad, I hope. <laughs> you know, I thought people don't listen to the patient, you know, and it was frustrating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether it's your situation yeah. or your situation or anybody else's situation is hearing it, the time you really right. need that emotional support exactly. is when these traumatic events happen to you mm-hmm. physically or... or and that's... Yeah. Well, or you come out of it maybe physically healed, but then you come out of it with all this this trauma, exactly. the mental stuff that happened yeah. to you. When but you what Lee's talking about is absolutely to the point of what yeah. I'm saying in terms of I get that. this is just this is weaving through the whole fabric of society. <laughs> I mean, I could talk about situations with our son in the hospital that are not dissimilar, just different circumstance. Mm-hmm. And that's what, with this mm-hmm. woman whose passion was for homelessness, I'm saying, everything you're saying is so parallel mm-hmm. to what my objectives are for those mm-hmm. who are struggling with mm-hmm. mental health and, and, and addiction. Totally parallel, and of course, many homeless people are struggling yes, with those issues are. as well. I'm, yeah. I'm getting the, 
pretty close to wind up thing, so we mm -hmm. want to say that it's Hope and Healing is the name of the show, and stay it, tuned. Well, not the name of the show yet, but it's I, it's the gatherings are called Hope and Healing. And Hope and Healing, I think, is going to be utilized okay. in the name of the show. Sure. We're still kind of just want to hit it just right. Good. So that, okay. okay, that's good. So it's right. expansive good. enough, but it also mm -hmm. gives you a sense of yeah. what we're about. Yeah. And it's going to be, Excellent. did I hear you say once a month it'll be, with, or did I miss The Hope that? and Healing Gatherings. As once a month. How about your show? The show, um, I think that has yet to be determined. I know we're starting out with um, six, shows, six right? episodes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then sort of evaluate where yeah. we are at that point. Yeah. And they'll be here, the six episodes? They'll be here, yes. Okay. Great. Jill okay. Humphreys of Portsmouth awesome. Television Station has... Great. And good excitedly for, welcome back. Yes, and good for them. I mean, they, they are. Wonderful. They're wonderful here. Uh, we want to. We want to. These shows don't push. exist out there. I no, mean, they Where don't. are these shows? You know. No, I'm surprised. Actually, yeah. we need. This is wonderful that you're doing this. Yeah. And we want to push. We yeah. want to push the envelope. We want to yeah. push for the yeah. truth mm -hmm. and change. Mm -hmm. We need to say goodbye, and then Lee, what do we say at the end of the show? And talk about the segment we're going to have. See. Um, remember, it's what you can do, not what you can't. And we're going to. We have Craig Worth today. We have Craig Worth and Worth a minute. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have Worth a minute with Pastor Craig Worth, who's actually teaching up at the Chaplaincy Institute of Maine now till the next coordination, besides being on staff at Crumple Center, the brain injury program in Portsmouth. So he's a busy man. Bill, can we see that worth a minute? I, I love that show. All right, we're going to have that one you want to watch. This is Worth a Minute. My name is Craig Worth. A couple of years ago, I took a few acrylic painting classes. Although I'd love to be able to call myself a painter, I haven't really put the time in since then to get any good at it. That, I hope, will come another day. What stuck with me from these lessons, though, is a new way of seeing and appreciating the world around me. One lesson was about painting water. We were all set up on the shore of a small pond so we could see what our teacher was talking about and try to work with it. On this day, she spoke of three aspects of the look of water. One, she said, is the surface of the water, where you would find a floating stick or a lily pad, or the ripples from the wind or a pebble. Another is the reflection from above and from the other side, the reflected image of trees on the far side of the pond, the moon and clouds or the rising sun. The third is seeing through the water to the fish or the rocks or the plants on the bottom below. The soft edge shape of a koi fish 18 inches below the surface. The truck tire or the moxie soda bottle or the silver coin stuck in the mud at the bottom. The goal for the day was to consider all of these things when trying to capture water in a painting. I tried it out a few times and was starting to get somewhere but as I said up front, I haven't gotten very good at it, rendering it all with paint and canvas. What has stuck with me, though, what I am pretty good at now, is that every time I look at water, I pay attention to these three things. I see the water more completely. I notice my mind's ability to shift among the three views and to try to hold them all at the same time. This relatively basic lesson has deepened my appreciation, my enjoyment, and my ability to more fully see what is before me in the world. This lesson about water reminds me that people can be looked at in a similar way. We see first what's on the surface with someone, how they look, how they talk, what they say in a given moment. We may see what is reflected upon them perhaps what we, we reflect upon them from our knowledge of other situations and our history with other people. And if we work at it, we might see what's in them that is below the surface. We might see that the offensive or angry comment that appears on the surface is really coming from what's below the surface, what they have been hurt by 
or what they are afraid of. Next time, I'll tell you a true story that illustrates this more clearly. It's one that was told to me by a 104-year-old woman. Don't Dis My Ability is made possible through the generous support of Full Circle Community Thrift Store, helping individuals or families living with cancer. Our goal is to help alleviate the stresses of daily financial obligations during this time by providing financial assistance to those in need. Full Circle Community Thrift Store. Living Innovations, providing support for people with developmental disabilities to have a good life at home and in the community. Services include community connections, which facilitates employment, skill development, and community integration to maximize each individual's well-being and independence. For more information or to learn about job opportunities for compassionate people wishing to do meaningful work, visit livinginnovations.com. Natural Care Wellness Center has been serving the New Hampshire and Maine seacoast for 18 years. Our goal is to encourage a healthy lifestyle through education, wellness choices, and hands-on healing. Natural Care Wellness Center, offering gentle force chiropractic, family and child wellness, chiropractic acupuncture, holistic nutrition, nutrition response testing, a decompression table, therapeutic exercise, whole food supplements, neuro-emotional techniques, and massage therapy. And by One Sky Community Services, for over 30 years, One Sky has taken great pride in overcaring for those with developmental disabilities and acquired brain disorders. Dedicated to every individual it serves, giving them full comprehensive support and services essential to fulfilling the personal and professional potential and becoming a successful member of their community. Serving 24 Seacoast communities, call 603-436-6111 for further information and by TMS Architects, New England Design Redefined.